The Democrats are already doing what they do best, which is compromising on the compromise. Here's a story in The Hill on the Biden team's health care plans. This is what they say. A battle within the Democratic Party is looming on health care if presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden wins and the Senate flips. In the primary earlier this year, Biden's plan for a government-run public option for health insurance was seen as the moderate choice compared with Senator Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All. But once the arena shifts away from the campaign trail to Congress, where the proposal would have to pass via a narrow margin in the Senate, and despite fierce opposition from well-funded industry groups, Biden's plan would become a daunting challenge to enact. Surveying this landscape, some Democratic congressional aides and outside health care advisors who spoke on the condition of anonymity said they expected the party would start next year with a more modest package of fixes to Obamacare that did not include a public option in an effort to get some early points on the board. Kamala Harris the other day released something. She wants to improve Obamacare, get this, over a 10-year period. So we've gone from Medicare for all, single payer, let's catch up to the rest of the developed world, to actually, no, that's too ambitious, let's just do a public option, to forget a public option, let's just vaguely improve Obamacare over a 10-year period. There are two reasons the Democrats are doing this. Number one, they take money from Big Pharma and the for-profit health insurance companies. So they're corrupt, and they're doing the bidding of their donors in the industry. That's the first one. The second one is, Democrats are scared of any word uttered by Republicans. And they preemptively fold, they preemptively cave in an attempt to appear to the media to, I'm more... I'm so reasonable, I'm so moderate, I'm above the fray. Yes, let's try this third way move. This triangulation, as it's called. Let's do the Bill Clinton strategy. This is what's called the new democratic strategy. And we say we're above it all. We're above, we're above partisanship. We'll be the reasonable ones who will now propose what was formerly just a right-wing Republican idea. This is pathetic. This is pathetic. You know how many you know how many Republican votes there were for Obamacare? I hope you're sitting. There were zero. Not a single Republican supported Obamacare. So, why this obsession with like, oh my god, if we do what they want, then maybe they'll support it. No, they won't because Obamacare is an individual mandate system that came from a right-wing think tank called the Heritage Foundation. It used to be supported by Republicans in the 1990s like Chuck Grassley and Newt Gingrich. And then Obama proposed it and they backed off of it. They're like, no, 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 we don't want to have anything to do with that. So you're giving them exactly what they want and they still back off of it and you got zero votes and you're still going out there compromising on the compromise to the compromise. Because you don't want it. Not only do they not want Medicare for all, they don't want a public option because they fear that if they do a public option, the public option will be so wildly successful that it will take out the for-profit health insurance companies in the long run because you'd probably get better care and it would cost less. So who wouldn't want to go into the public option? That's what they fear. Hey, if we do a public option, our donors in the industry are going to be pissed off because that's going to put them out of business. So they don't want Medicare for all. They don't even want a public option. And they want you to shut up, fall in line, and vote for them. We have a pandemic on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. We've covered stories of bills for COVID-19 that cost over a million dollars. Medical bills is one of the top causes of bankruptcy in this country. We have over 30 million Americans who don't have health care. There was 7 to 9 million who lost their health insurance before COVID hit, but under the Trump administration. Now we have another 23 or so million who lost their health insurance because they had their insurance through their job and they lost their job because the economy is imploding. The Democratic Party is looking at a situation 
where tens of millions of Americans have no health insurance. And what's their answer? Incremental changes over a 10-year period to maybe, maybe not cover some of you. This is beyond pathetic. This is beyond pathetic. This is beyond weak. This is beyond corrupt. This is disgusting. They don't even know how to pretend to want to fight for you. And every single person who tries to shame you because you don't want to immediately pledge your vote to Joe Biden, fuck them. Fuck them. They're supposed to come to you. You're the voter. They serve you. You don't feel like they're serving you well, right? When your family members don't have health care. Or you just got a medical bill for $67,000. All of the anger should be directed at them. Not voter shaming people. If you have standards and you apply them, that's called being an adult who has thought things through. But they smear that. Oh my, it's a litmus test. Gross. What are you, what are you, purist? Yes, I'd like to not die from not having health care. Yes. Is that too pure of me? I'd like to not go bankrupt from a medical bill. Is that too pure of me? I'd like for all Americans to have health care in a pandemic. Somehow, we have all the money in the world to increase Donald Trump's bloated military budget every single year. We have enough money to add $2 trillion to the deficit with another tax cut for the rich. But we can't give people health care in a pandemic. We can't do what the rest of the developed world has managed to do and has been doing for a very long time, mind you. We can't do it. Even though Medicare for All saves $5 trillion over a decade, we can't do it. We can't do it. It's not that you can't do it. It's that you don't want to do it. Because really, the people who run the system are the corporate donors. It is Big Pharma. It is the for-profit health insurance companies. It is the military-industrial complex. It is Wall Street. They run the system. They own the politicians. And the Democrats are supported to be the half-measure party. Hey, 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 you want some tweaks around the edges that might help you a little bit but also increase profits for health insurers? Fine. We'll do some tweaks around the edges. Don't you dare ask for universal social democratic policies. Because we will laugh you out of the room and we will treat you like you're Fidel Castro. They try to make you feel crazy and they try to make you feel stupid for saying, hey, can we please just catch up to the rest of the developed world? Can we please just do that? They try to make you feel ashamed for wanting that. And then they spit in your eye and slap you in the face with stories like this. We haven't even begun the healthcare fight yet in the middle of a pandemic. And what are the Democrats saying? Well, I know that the party wants over 80% of Democratic voters want Medicare for all. Sorry, not going to do it. Screw you to my own base. Okay, public option is one step removed from that. We're not going to do that either. And they literally frame it like, because what about the Republicans? There's going to be a long fight over this. They didn't even vote for Obamacare, which was a right-wing idea. They're not going to vote for anything you put forward. So you might as well be for the solution. You might as well be for the correct thing. Why is it totally out of bounds for Democrats to think, hey, what if we fought relentlessly for the correct position? Why is that totally out of bounds? Why is that not even considered in the conversation? Because it's not. It's not considered. Oh, okay. We only have X amount of votes for Medicare for all, and we need X amount more. How about we run aggressive campaigns? How about we call out the people who aren't for Medicare for all? How about we shame them in their own district to their own voters? How about we embarrass them nationally and put pressure on them? Fighting is out of bounds for Democrats. They're like, no, I, that's ridiculous. Why would I actually take a position 
believe in it, have a conviction, and fight for it. And here's the thing, guys, because you might say it doesn't matter how hard they fight, it won't work. Yes, but then you have this thing called an election. And if you sufficiently crush your opponents with good arguments that appeal to the people, well, then they lose, and then you get more Democrats elected, and then eventually you can pass a bold agenda. Now, I know it's a long-term project, but that's life, and that's politics. Rome wasn't built in a day, so you have to get to work on it right now. But they don't do it, because they're corrupt and they're weak, and they don't want what you and I want. But this is why I've told everybody there is a democratic civil war. It is the left versus the corporatists. Acknowledge there's a civil war and fight for your damn side, as opposed to what most of the elected lefties do, including Bernie, which is like, pretend like there's no civil war. Hey, maybe if I'm nice enough to them, they'll be nice to me back. They're never going to support Medicare for all. You have to force them to. You have to shame them and embarrass them and shine a light on it and call them out and be aggressive and be relentless. We didn't vote you into Washington, D.C. to make friends. You're there to fight for the American people. Now, do you know how to do that at all? Or are you going to tuck your tail in between your legs and go cry? The answer is they're going to tuck their tail in between their legs and go cry. They're not going to fight. It's a long-term project, but you have to start now. If you got zero Republican votes for Obamacare, okay, then get a supermajority, get zero Republican votes again, and get Medicare for all. Because I got news for you, even with the Republicans not voting for it, 51% of their base actually wants it. The actual people want it. The actual people need it. So there are corrupt politicians in your way. Bulldoze them. Bulldoze them. As hard as you possibly can. At the very least, if you go down, you go down swinging. But we're not even swinging. We're laying in a chalk outline of ourselves. Because I see no real leadership. The Bernie Sanders of old is long gone. It was soon, as soon as he voted for the CARES Act, it was like, oh, okay. What happened to this guy? And where are the other ones taking a stand? I do have to give credit to the Bernie delegates who refused to vote for the DNC platform because they said, it doesn't have Medicare for all, I can't vote for this. And there are a bunch of them. There are a bunch of them who were like, no, we're not, no. This is, over 80% of our party wants it, and you say no. 60% of the American people want it, you say no. No way. We're against it. And legal marijuana too. They were like, this is ridiculous. So credit to them. But these are fighters like Nina Turner, who's actually not in Congress, not in the Senate. She should be. But she's not in there, so there are no real leaders on the national scene who know how to take the fight to them like I'm advocating for right now. And this is why you get these articles which repeatedly slap the left in the face. Let's compromise on top of the compromise, on top of the compromise. And then expect to get pats on the back and expect the left to run to the polls to vote for you with a smile on their faces. When you're saying, I'm not going to give you Dickie McGee's axe. We got to wise up, we got to wake up. Again, I'm going to put it like this. When it comes to actual policy, I'm the purest of the purest. I do have a litmus test. And I will fight for these things. I have, I have standards. You want to shame me for having standards? By all means. I have no purity test at all when it comes to personal stuff. And unfortunately, in today's Democratic Party, they have the inverse of everything I just described. They do have... Purity tests, but only for personal lives and things of that nature. And offensive comments and claims of victimhood. Purity on that front, no purity at all on policy. You could be as corrupt as you want, as big of a sellout as you want, as big of a neoliberal corporatist as you want. We welcome you with open arms. And that's the problem in this country. That's exactly what I described right there. That's the problem in this country. That's the problem with the Democrats. This is beyond pathetic and... It means we just need to get more involved. All of us need to get more involved. A bunch of us got to run because we can't let this keep happening. We can't afford this.